Hey, -o. welcome back, everybody. This is Ian Chikino from our StarCraft 2 commentaries. We got a match here today from the qualifiers for the uh, Lake Charles Scion Esports tournament coming up uh, November 14th, I want to say. <laughs> Um, anyways, this is a qualifying match from there. This is a best of three. I'm going to commentate both of these games. And let's go ahead and introduce our players. On the map, Akalon Oasis, top left corner of the map. We've got our Zerg player in the red. It's going to be Masan. Masan. And his opponent at the bottom right corner of the map, the green Zerg player, will go by the name of Clash. Alrighty, so this is a best of three, like I said, for the Lake Charles Scion eSports event. I will be commentating that uh, for you in person, so you guys can look forward to that in the future. And um, I will probably commentate a couple more games from the qualifiers for this event in preparation and lead up to this uh, big event coming up here in Louisiana. But anyways, enough of that, so let's go ahead and look at the game. No pulls yet for any of the players. Gas going down here for Clash already. So looking to play aggressive. Um, Masan going for a pull. So uh, let's see. Pull, then Gas. And then a pull here for Clash. So Clash is going for a uh, lot earlier Gas here. We'll see what he's going to do with this. Might be a Baneling thing, I would imagine. Might be just quick speed into uh, Hatch. What time will tell? What's going to happen? Anyways. Drones being made for each guy. As we'll see uh, when they pull off in gas. Uh, that'll give us a good indicator. You know, if he's going to go, usually if he's going to go for a, you know, bailing nest, you throw it up at 50 if you want to get it as soon as possible. But if he goes past 50, which he is right now, it's looking more and more like speed will be coming up for him. And over here in this corner, uh, our Masan Red Zerg player. Let's see what he's going to be going with. Just chilling out. Okay, it looks like he's going for speed as well. So he won't get speed that much quicker, but. Uh, he's gonna have to uh, notice the the difference in speed like here we go speeds going up right now and uh, speed will be coming up just a little bit later you know you could get maybe a good engagement for a couple seconds so it's still not up yet okay now he's probably gonna start it yeah so he's got about what is that like 15 seconds of speed advantage uh, that could maybe help him get a favorable engagement or maybe just pick off a couple drones uh, before his opponent gets uh, zerglings out with speed now we've got uh, a lot of Zerglings coming out and the Baneling Nest. Where is the Baneling Nest at? Ah, there it is. There's the Baneling Nest. So yeah, he's of course continuing to mine gas. That's a pretty good indicator of Banelings coming up. And he's just continued to produce units out. Zerglings heading out across the map at this point. Masan has seen this. He has his Overlord in position. Uh, this guy is a little bit further out, but uh, he's seen it with the other units. Queen down here on the ramp, but that guy is going to get surrounded because there's already four Zerglings down here. This Queen cannot run anywhere. Minor mistake here for Masan. That's going to turn into a huge mistake uh, if he loses this queen for, what is this, three Zerglings. Oh, God, that was so close. If he, those other Zerglings would have got there in just two or three seconds sooner, he might have actually saved it. But, yeah, three Zerglings for a queen. I'll make that trade any day of the week. That's going to force Masan to make another queen. And critically, what is super important about this is now that the fact that he doesn't have two queens out, uh, he can't do a straight-up wall-off with the queens on the ramp to deal with the Banelings. So, uh... Throw down a spine crawler. Worried about some uh, more aggression coming his way. He's making his own defensive bailing nest. He's got a hatchery going up at his natural. Investing in that, he sees at this point, you know, there's no hatch going up here at the natural. So he knows very well that a uh, all in is commencing. Speed is done here, uh, but unfortunately, speed isn't working on those bailings. He's just gonna walk on in there. Gonna try and get some connectors. Gonna go straight for the drones in the back. A couple uh, takes out a couple larvae there. It looked like no, actually, those just hatched. And now it's gonna come down to who can split better: the splits versus the splits. Bailings moving in here. Zergling's gonna take out that. Uh, Queen, nice. Uh, take out there a couple of uh, Zerglings. Oh, that was so close right there. He almost got five or six of them. And this spine crawler will fall. Let's check the units while we're at it. What is that? Uh oh, Bailing went off. I love some of that. Uh, Ten Zerglings versus six. So a little close here. But it looks like the reinforcement from Masan will be enough to hold this off. And uh, let's check the worker count while we're at it. What do we got here? 14 versus 13. So this is looking pretty good here for Masan. If he can just continue to hold off these last couple units, he's going to be sitting pretty. He's going to have. Um, the, about the same amount of workers, 13 versus 14, but the fact that he has the hatchery here at the natural is going to be really important. He's uh, bought himself enough time. He's got speed. He's got a queen out, and his opponent only has one queen at this point as well. It looks pretty much identical, but the second hatchery is going to allow him just to have so much extra production. Now we have Zerglings versus Zerglings. Four Zerglings being sent in his little scout guys. A couple of Banelings being built here in the back. 
And at this point, Clash doesn't really have that many options. He's just going to continue this all in and hope to make something from it. Hopefully, you know, maybe get a good Baneling hit uh, and just completely change the tides of this fight. If he could bait him down here to the low ground into these Banelings, uh, he could do a lot of damage, but no, smartly, Masan is microing those units back, splitting them up, and nice controlled fire there with the Queen taking out those low HP Banelings. And another one goes down, but he did manage to take out a lot of Larva, you know. He knew that guy was going to die, so he made the best of a bad situation, taking out, looks like, five or six Larva there, so. Uh, but at this point, you know, Masan has got pretty good defensive advantage right now. He's going to get the reinforcements quicker, and Clash is just continuing to pump out units. And Masan has definitely noticed this because he's just non-stop producing units as well. He's got another queen coming out. That's going to allow him to block this ramp. And uh, it's going to be hard for uh, Clash to, you know, make something work here. A couple of Zerglings going into the main, but uh, those guys will probably get taken out. Uh, trying to sneak into Banelings over here, maybe. That's always a fun tactic. Yeah, he sees it. Any Zerg player with the salt knows that if Zerglings go on your base and they haven't started attacking your mineral line yet, they're going to be morphing into Banelings somewhere. Oh, great! Counter of a Baneling there by um, Masan, taking out a lot of those Banelings, and not much left here for Clash. Those Zerglings in the main do get dealt with. And, uh, I mean, now, look at this. We have enough Creep Tumors coming out. He's got more production here at the main, or sorry, at the natural. And even dealing with the Banelings outside of his base, at this point, Masan has this game, uh, has a fairly large lead. Oh, wow. I wasn't expecting that to finish. That was uh, pretty big right there. And he's actually producing a couple drones, but at this point, uh, Clash is still producing uh, uh, Zerglings. You know, he's just non-stop producing Zerglings, so uh, those drones and that one Baneling hit are kind of working uh, in Clash's favor right now. Baneling not going to complete, as opposed to that earlier one that just finished and uh, took out a couple Zerglings, but uh, the Zergling micro war is continuing. Both players continue to produce Zerglings. This Zergling versus Baneling battle is going to go on, I would imagine, until uh, one of them dies or Clash runs out of money in his main, uh, which takes like, I think, 20 minutes or something with that amount of workers. Actually, he's got a few where he's only got 11, so it might take even a little bit longer. That Zergling's just being rallied in here to the natural, and Clash has got the numbers lead, and he's forcing he's forcing Masan back, and the hatchery, will it fall? There's a lot of Zerglings here. It's hard to say who's got more at this point, but it looks like Masan has enough just to keep himself alive. Both players morphing in a couple Banelings, a couple defensive ones for Masan. Like that, he's using the lowest HP uh, Zerglings to do that. Of course, the Banelings get full HP uh, once they spawn in, but the downside is you can kill them off a little bit quicker. A lot of Banelings rolling here. They are grouped up. He needs to split them up. He needs to split those guys up. Uh, two Queens now at the ramp. More Banelings being produced. Clash still sending guys across the map. And of course, you know, Masan sees all this with his well-placed overlords throughout the, the course of the map here. And, uh, Clash is just continuing to uh, produce a lot of uh, work, or sorry, a lot of Zerglings and a lot of Banelings. But look at this, we got Masan trying to sweep in a couple extra drones here, but let's see how this fight goes. There's a lot of Banelings connecting on each other, it's hard to say. Who came out on top there? Uh, a couple of Banelings still alive, I think Masan, he's gonna be able, he's gonna lose a Queen now, but at the cost of all those Zerglings. And now Masan with a huge, uh, huge amount of Zerglings in, in reserve here. All these guys up here, plus two Banelings. Uh, he's got more units than his opponent already has. He's on two bases. Not technically two base economy because he's only got two workers down here, but the Zergling Baneling continues, and this is where uh, ping is extremely critical, and any small minor misclick can just lose you, you know, your entire army at any second. So, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, still trying to squeak out a couple extra drones there. Uh, a couple of Zerglings just, you know, frantically trying to run in here, see what they can do, realizing they're completely outnumbered. Banelings do not need to connect on these guys. You can save those guys for maybe some... Um, Enemy Banelings coming his way. You can just use the vast number of Zerglings he's got to uh, deal with this pressure from uh, from Clash. But yeah, at this point, Clash is uh, battling his way uphill, and it's slippery, and uh, it's not it's not good times for Clash, unfortunately. So, uh, barring some insane Baneling hit by Clash, uh, Masan has got a strong advantage. Now, he's even feeling so comfortable that he can make even more drones. He's got a 26 versus 14, so at this point, you know, Clash has to end this game extremely quick. Otherwise, he's going to be outproduced, and uh, Masan's just going to walk all over him uh, with Zerglings, Banelings, Roaches, whatever he feels like making, because at this point, he can pretty much make almost anything and outproduce Clash and win the game, just on the numbers alone. So yeah, Clash is uh, trying to build up a force here, maybe sneak in. He's kind of hit his units over here out of the prying vision of the Overlords. But it's like we said, still on 11 workers, not that much over here. 
and Masan with a, you know, he's got more workers at his natural than, than Clash does at his main, and that always, that doesn't bode well for a mirror match when you're that out macroed by your opponent. Whoa, that's a lot of Banelings. Now even Spinecrawler is being produced at the natural here at the wall. Splitting up a couple Banelings, two in the front, trying to split them up as well as possible. Two, six, he's even splitting up a little bit more, splitting those guys up, but, uh, oh, wow, it's a great two for four. Better splits here from Asan. Now the spine crawler's up. This is it. This is the last ditch attempt from Clash, and it's not going to work. A couple more Zerglings coming here. But look at all the reserved Zerglings here uh, from Masan. Sure, he lost a couple spine crawlers, but uh, that was the whole. As was at the cost of Clash's army. GG's go down for both players. And we're going to see Masan take this first victory in this mirror match in the ZVZ. That's going to be game number one in this series. Congrats to Masan for taking that out. Holding off the uh, early. Uh, uh, one basing Zerg style uh, this game from Clash. And uh, yeah, that'll put us on. So we'll head on in game number two uh, for uh, this series of ZBZ coming up next. Make sure you guys check out that. See you later.